Hi guys, welcome back. Dorothy, professional astrologer. You can find me on the web nhastrologer.com. Today's forecast is the week of November 6th to the 12th. So stay with me. I'll be right back. All right, welcome back. If you need to get in touch with me, please use the link in the text box below nhastrologer.com and we can have some personal conversations there. Starting on Monday, November 6th, the first thing that we have is Mercury has just entered the sign of Sagittarius. It did that on the day before. Mercury, for three weeks now, has been in Scorpio. Mercury gathers information, it communicates and it talks a lot. But in Scorpio, it's gathering information to store. So it understands people and situations and things on a deeper level. Now, as soon as Mercury goes into the sign of Sagittarius, it wants to know what the truth is and it wants to share the truth with those around it. We also have the moon in the sign of Gemini on Monday because it's not this is not a big action day, but this is a day where if the moon, our emotions, is in Gemini, how we communicate, the moon we want to communicate how we feel emotionally. So emotionally, we'll be communicating. Mercury in Sagittarius is not the best place for Mercury because Mercury is about gathering little bits of information, and Sag is like blurting it all out there. So. Some way, somehow, we may start to initiate what the true truth is for us. What's true, true, right? Um, I'm referencing a movie there. And so, what is your truth? Or what's the truth of a situation around you? It's not a big, it doesn't have to be a big situation, but it could be definitely something that the truth will be coming out over the next few weeks while Mercury moves through Sagittarius, the Sagittarius and the moon in Gemini definitely gives it a little bit of a kick and a punch to step into whatever it is we need to talk about because our emotions will be attached to our words. That is Monday the 6th. Now, on November 7th and 8th, so Tuesday and Wednesday, again, there's not a lot of big stuff, so I'm kind of combining th some things, but this is okay. So the Venus moves into Scorpio. Now, at 6.38 a.m. on Tuesday morning, November 7th on the East Coast. She has been in, Venus has been in her own sign for three and a half weeks, almost four weeks until now. Venus in Libra is all about, it's her hometown, right? It's her, she's connecting with relationships and the things she values and finding that peace, harmony, and balance in our lives. Now it's in Scorpio. Now she means it. Now let's get serious. How are we going to take what we know, what's casual, what's just easy and comfortable, and let's make it mean more. Let's make it take it and take it to another level. Let's go deeper with this. And in the same time, we also have the moon has moved into Cancer. When that moon's in Cancer, Venus is in Scorpio. These are all emotional water signs. So over a couple of days... Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, we will start to communicate what's important to us in our relationships, and we will start looking for a deeper way to connect that we haven't connected for or to yet, looking and seeking our own personal truths. That's what we get on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday with all of these things I've talked about, all right? And again, don't worry about the astrological terminology. Listen to the sentences you understand. Okay, I know that's the hard part for folks who don't know astrology. And hey, if you want to learn astrology, I am a teacher. And I have a new beginner class starting in January, so come and find me on my website and ask me all about it. And I can help you with that. And so, just know, lots of talk and communicating in the things that we value, the things that are close to our hearts over the first three days of this week. All right, moving on to November 9th and 10th. The sun makes a sextile to Pluto. This is pretty, this is okay. This is receptive. Pluto has been wreaking havoc in your life. And you'll only know if you know your chart well. But if you've been feeling these really low rumblings of change coming along in your life, now that the sun is making a really easy little connection, it's a sextile to Pluto, that on the 9th and the 10th, with this aspect between the sun and Pluto, we have an opportunity. They're both receptive and reactive. That if you, you know, this is about letting go of control and power and allowing the true nature of who you are and allowing our true nature of whatever it is we're focusing on 
to, to just continue to move forward and be present, but not try to force things to happen. The sun will illuminate that for us, especially since they're, and they're both in receptive signs. They're both in feminine signs. So being receptive and reactive. So watch for the clues of where you're supposed to take your next steps in doing what we do naturally is what this energy of the sun sextiling Pluto is all about, especially Pluto has been giving you some hard times lately. Then we also have, this one's a wicked toughie. It is Mars in Libra. Mars is not a fan of being in Libra because Mars is about taking action. Libra is about being fair and balanced and what's good for your partner, not necessarily what's good for you. You know, it's really, it's about whatever's good for you is good for me, is the Libra energy, right? Which is perfectly fine, but Mars in this sign is not that great with it. We'll work with it and we deal with it, but it's in a quincunx to Neptune. And Neptune um, is in Pisces, and it's in the position in quincunx is the way we look at it, um, I don't want to get into it. That's a lesson, astrology lesson, a deeper astrology lesson about quincunxes. But the, the point is Neptune in Pisces is in the position of Virgo. And that means that we're, uh, it's, we're needing to focus on details. We can't focus on details. Nept Virgo is the opposite sign of Neptune, right? Or Pisces. And... Libra, where Mars is the opposite sign of Mars's natural home. So we basically just have a lot of dysfunction in trying to take action because we don't know where to take it. So there's this big underlying energy that's going to last for about five days on either side of the 10th of November where we're not sure what steps to take. So again, I would tell us, even though we have these, this is a difficult aspect. It really is. So if we don't know what to do, then it's okay to sort of just sit there and hit neutral. It's like if you're driving around a neighborhood and you're trying to find a place, you don't keep driving. You stop, you take a breath. I know I hate getting lost. You stop, you take a breath, you either re reset your GPS or you find somebody and you ask them directions. You stop and you take a breath. It's really what it comes down to. So if you're feeling something is so hard and you can't find a way out of it, then hit your neutral button Hit your pause and just stay paused and just sit with whatever it is for the next few days. You don't have to make decisions just because we're always pushing to make choices and decisions. This aspect between Mars and Neptune is super uncomfortable, very difficult to manage for anybody. So allow it, just allow. And that's going to be the key word. It sounds like Abraham, I'm talking about Abraham. So allow these things to be what they are all right all right on november 11th now 11 11 people love that day it's veterans day thank you to all who have served all my family members until this very generation have been in the military from the revolution american revolution forward so i have a lot of folks here so we honor them now we look at what's going on for the uh aspects for the day we have the moon in Leo, right? And it's connecting with Saturn and Uranus. And Saturn and Uranus are making a connection too. Basically, we have a grand trine in fire, right? It makes a big triangle. The moon, Saturn, Uranus. All of them are in fire. So it's all, It's to me, this is a wonderful day. It's all within three degrees of the eclipse of August 21st. So look back. What do you recognize shifted around that time period? And even if something didn't, what were you thinking about? Hopefully you kept a journal because with an aspect like this, now's the time that we may actually see something shifting towards what it is that we want, right? The moon moves through Leo all the time, but this is an exact aspect now between Saturn and Uranus. They've been applying for a while, you know, and then we've kind of had it a little bit before earlier in the year, but the point is, Everybody's lining up. You got this great big fire grand trine in the sky. So it's about taking action. So on November 11th, taking action is a super important thing to do. All right. Where you see action is needed. It's different for everybody. But where this grand trine is lighting up all the fire in your astrology chart, look at those houses and that adds information, personal information to you, okay? So three different fiery areas in your chart are getting lit up for all of us. That means we can finally move past something or move through something or into something that we've been wanting to do for a while. Now, let's finish up 
on November 12th, the thing that's really happening is that just the moon's in Virgo, so it's about being very particular and paying attention to the daily details. That's really it for November 12th, Sunday, November 12th. But the aspect that's coming up is on Monday, November 13th. So I'm going to add that in today anyways. So on Monday the 13th and Sunday the 12th, with all of this coming together, Venus and Jupiter coming together in Scorpio. So to me, this is... This is Venus and Jupiter together. They're both, they're the lovers, they're the cosmic lovers, if you will. I know sometimes we put Mars in there too, but in the sign of Scorpio, this is bringing to the surface what it is that we value the most. And I know I've said that a lot in this forecast. What we value the most is coming up. That's that Venus in Scorpio. What am I deeply connected to? Jupiter is Sagittarius, is, is all about expanding these deep, dark things, all right? So while this is a really pleasant, these two planets are, are benefic, they're both very pleasant energies, and so we can expect that Sunday and Monday should be a day where things are moving along relatively easily and to our benefit. Now, with Jupiter in Scorpio, there's been plenty of forecasts out there about Jupiter in Scorpio. It is expanding those deeper, darker things that we all hold within. But today, on the, the 12th and the 13th, we get little Venus there, so she's just going to be able to really uh, kind of like reel something in for us that makes us feel really good and very comfortable and beautiful. And any way that you want to use that to expand love and compassion in your life, that is something that we can do with that energy too. All right? Because we always have free will. This is just a forecast of the energies that are present. Please choose and what you want to do with this. And don't, um, it, it doesn't rule us. Remember, if we allow what is to be, if, I know, I'm preaching. No, I'm not. This is, just how, this is truly how I feel. If we allow what is to be, um, then even these hard aspects really will not create like major influences. They will not give us too much trouble. So, you can be around us. Again, it's our attitude and how we look at things, right? We all know that. All right, I'm going to leave you with that. This is getting long. It's going to be over 15 minutes. I talk fast and I, I think, I wonder if I can cut this down to like seven. And it's just like, no, nope. Anyways, guys, thank you for being here. And please come to my website, nhastrologer.com. And I have classes and a class coming up in January, private lessons anytime and private sessions as well. And on my events page, you can see where I'm at because I work at a few different stores throughout New England. So come and find me. And thank you very much for listening. Blessings and namaste.